Howdy everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing some little farmhouse jars. I've got my uh, supplies here and they are from the Dollar Tree. So I've got these two glass jars that have these little metal screw on lids. I thought they were really cute and I want to cover them with a mesh here. And there I have these baskets which have, which have the mesh. Now I don't know if I'll need the two baskets uh, and if maybe one of them is enough to go all the way around both of them. But I went ahead and I got the second one just in case. And I've got some a black paint. I would prefer to use some spray paint, but we're having one of those days outside. It's been like this all day where we've got some thunderstorms and I'm not gonna be able to spray paint anything and take it out there to dry. So I've just got some craft paint, so I'm just gonna make do with that. But I suggest you use some spray paint because this is a little tin. And then I've got these two little wood balls and uh, I happen to have those already. You can get them at any craft store. Uh, you might want to look around the Dollar Tree and see if they have anything. I did find some dice, some flat dice that didn't have the little indentation, which were used for a different game. And I thought about using those little squares at the top here, but then I remembered that I had these. So I went ahead and used these. You don't have to have them because after all, they are screw on tops, I just or lids. I just thought it would be really cute to have the little knob on the top. It's just for looks. Okay, so I've got two of those, and I got the ones with the little flat bottoms here, so they rest on there. Uh, I've also got some leftover twine here that I might use, or maybe I'll use this one. This is that nautical rope. They happen to have that, this at the Dollar Tree as well. They also have a small roll of twine there as well, so if you want to use that, you can find all of that at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using my hot glue gun, but I'm also going to be using this adhesive. And I'm basically going to be using this for uh, gluing the little little wood balls on top of the lid. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and uh, glue those on. And then I want to go ahead and start painting them so they can start drying. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my jars and I'm actually going to go ahead and wash them out uh, with a dish detergent because I'm going to be using them for food. You can use them for anything. You may not need to wash them out if you're just going to pour some full puree or some little buttons or trinkets or whatever you decide to put in there. Uh, okay, so what I've got here is my glue gun and I've got that almost ready to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some paper down here first, grab a brush, and I also believe I need some wire uh, to then wire the two ends of the mesh here around the jar. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and I shall be back. All right, everyone, I also went ahead and I grabbed my wire cutters. I forgot to mention that. Uh, I did grab the wire that I said I was going to get. I have some black one. This I happened to grab it from the Dollar Tree. They have it where like automotive stuff is and some tools are. And it's in a packet where it comes with the silver and the red. And I'm going to use the black one, like I said. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to glue these little knobbies on top of my little lids here. So I want to put some glue down. And I'm going to use my hot glue gun to just kind of help it dry and hold for now. You don't have to use your hot glue gun. You can just use a E6000 or this super glue, fix all glue. They have this one at uh, the Dollar Tree. Okay, so just put some glue around it. Get that on there. Let me wipe up the excess here. Just center it. You probably want to put the glue and then put the knob first and then do the next one instead of doing what I did. Okay, so we just want to make sure it's on there for now. Let me get some glue on this one because it did dry up a little bit on me. There we go. Okay. The, the one from the glue gun dried up on me. Okay, so now I'm just going to get some craft paint. But like I said, I would rather spray paint it because I think it would be better or use a metal paint. That's my kitty cat. He's hungry. Okay, so I'm going to give it a coat and see how this looks. And if I have to, I will come back and give it a second coat. Now, especially on the, the metal part because, you know, with the brush strokes, it kind of just kind of just floats over the metal part. It doesn't really like get soaked in like it does into the wood. 
the little knob. Okay, I'm going to finish painting. I think I'll let them dry on the top and then do the sides and I'll be back. And we can uh, cut the baskets. And of course I'm going to wash my jars, so I'll be back. Alright, so while my lids are still drying, they're almost dry, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting my basket. So what I need to do, if you look at it, you will find where there's a seam. And it's usually the, the paint or whatever that you put to coat on it is a little bit thicker. So if you can tell right in this spot here, compared to the rest of the basket, it's a little darker so you can clearly see the lines. Yeah, come back to it and there you can see it. So this is clearly the back. So I'm going to start cutting back here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to start cutting that thicker wire because that's the hardest part to get into. And the rest of it will be, you know, fairly easy to cut through. It's just going to take a little while. So I'm going to cut downward along that seam. Okay. So this is what I'm doing. I'm cutting downward. So the next thing I'm going to do is then start cutting on the edge here so that I can remove this, this bottom part. And then I'm going to want to cut along as close as I can to this top edge because I don't want this thicker wire part. I actually don't even need these handles. Let me go ahead and take that off so they're not flopping around. So once I get to the bottom, which I'm almost there, then I can start cutting as close to the bottom as I can every little bit. Now, when you get to this part of the basket, the mesh, the wire mesh on it, like I said, it's easier to cut through, so you don't need a big uh, wire cutters for that. If you have some smaller ones you want to get in there and maybe move a little bit faster, do that. And I shall be back. I'm going to cut this one off. <clears throat> I'm not going to cut this one yet. Um, I feel like I might have to. I feel like uh, this is not going to. This is not enough to go all the way around. So you know what? Now that I've compared it and I've thought about it, it's not enough to go around both both uh, glass jars. So I'm going to go ahead and cut both baskets. So I'll be back once I have you know this whole part. And I can flatten it down the same with this one and then we'll get to the next step okay I have finished cutting off both of these strips from these parts here so I don't need those anymore and I do have the bottoms I've already put them in the trash actually let me show you just so that you see how closely I was cutting so this is just the bottom part and I've got both of them in the trash, and I've got the top parts here, and the little handles. Alright, so then I've gotten one of them here, and I've done my best to try and straighten it, because as you can see, <clears throat> it's kind of curved. And then uh, when it's curved like that, what it is is the top part, these little spaces here are actually wider than these. So you have to straighten it and pull on it, pull on the mesh, so that it all looks, you know, as even as they can and then you might also notice that it kind of gets maybe smaller maybe it's wider cut in some parts and that's okay just find the, the uh, best part that you can use and I feel like these uh, two wider parts are the best I've got part here where the seam was so I need to take that off so I'm just gonna trim off right at here and trim off that part okay okay so then the next thing I, I want to do is when I've got these little raw edges like this I want to make sure that I don't have any bits you know that are open like that it's because they will poke you so you want to cut them off the rest of this is closed but I want to make sure there's no little, oops, this is hitting me in the face. I'm just going to trim that off right there and that one off as well. And as you can see, I've got a nice little edge here. And then I'm going to trim off this as well. So then you just want to look at the top. Let's see, this is my top edge, for example, that's going to go um, on the top part of my jar like that. I want to make sure, let me get this over here that it's also that there's no little open pieces like the one that was here and I trimmed it off 
Now you'll notice at the bottom, um, if you can see mine, they, you've got little points like that down here as well. <clears throat> These right here, they don't have any more wire to them. I've, I've trimmed them right on the where you know they, they they come together the two little ends but these over here they come together but then there's a little bit of wire where another little triangle could have been formed but actually it's from where the bottom edge was so now I need to go and trim off those little bits so that I don't have little little edges like that I want to have edges that are more like this top part okay so then <clears throat> let's pretend that it's already been cut and we're gonna wrap our jar so we can see how much of a length we're going to need. This is the reason why I do want to cut them because I do find that these little edges with those little points on them, you know, they could scratch up your counter or, you know, table, wherever you put them on. So I'm going to put this on here and then I can decide, well, how long this is going to have to be. Now, once I decide how long it's going to have to be, I'm actually going to measure it just a tad longer than what it actually is so I'm going to mark it right here see I folded it because this is what will fit around it and it, it's it overlaps just a little bit and I am going to trim off that overlap but I need it there first because I don't want to cut it too short or where you know these little bits accidentally pop open which one of them down here did so you don't want that to do, you don't want that to happen. Okay, so just measure it, bend it. So I know that that's as far as I need to go, making sure everything is trimmed nicely. And I'm not gonna cut it yet, okay? So let me go ahead and do all my little trimming. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one as well. So I'm gonna cut off this part. That's where the, the overlap was, where it got you know sealed. Trim that off and then Go and trim all the little bits here. Make sure the top ones are also nice. And then uh, measure it and mark it just like I did this one. And I'll be back once all of that is ready to then be have this wire kind of intertwined through both ends and seal it. And our jar should be ready and done. So I shall be back. All right, I've gone ahead and I've trimmed both of them. One of them is still marked. This other one I've gone ahead and I've trimmed it just so that it barely, you know, like overlaps. It overlaps about an inch. So that's a good overlap right there. And what I want to do is I want to take some of this wire here and I'm going to cut a nice long piece of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically like sew. So now that I know that it needs to be this big. This is where it needs to overlap. I'm just going to bend it up a little bit right here where I know that it meets up with it. So then I can just take it, meet up with it again right there, put it together like that. Take the piece of wire that I've cut off and closest to that edge that's underneath and right where I more or less I bent it. I am going to weave the wire through the little holes. Like I'm sewing it. Okay, and there we go. And that should hold it right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end almost, just leave a little bit right there. I'm going to weave back and now it's going to go like kind of like opposite like it's going to go under where it, go, it was going over and then over where it was going under when it first went back through so just weave it back through all right pull it tight each time and one more right there okay so now that I've got it all woven I want to test it and make sure nice and snug yeah there we go just like that okay so let's go ahead and take it off again and we can take these wires and twist them okay but don't trim them yet what you're gonna do is you're gonna trim off this piece now okay so make sure 
And when you do that, you don't go trimming where, you know, that the, the little hole, you know, the little, you know how it has these little holes? These little holes. Don't trim so close that you end up cutting open that little hole where the wire is going through because this is just going to come right off. So just move over one and then trim it there, okay? So you're going to have a little bit of a slacky bit. Let me put this like that. So I can cut it close but not... And then this part I don't need. There we go. So there we go. And then just flatten that back up and just cut off any little little edges that are sticking out. Now, I cut it pretty long, so I'm going to go ahead and go through it one more time. This time I'm going to go ahead and grab on to that edge. It's like I'm so is this little this little edge here. It's like I'm sewing it down to this bottom part. So just go over and under. Over. Come on, honey. There we go. So just get yourself a nice long piece of wire to do this. Okay, now that I'm getting close to the end, just pulling it nice and tight. And then I'm just going to weave it through that little hole. Pull it again. Weave it again. And just pull it, just weave it as many times as you feel like comfortable enough where you can go ahead and then trim this little wire and then the other wire that you had up here that you twisted it you want to do the same thing on the other end just to make sure that it doesn't uh, untwist from the part where you twisted it with the other piece that went down okay so just get ready to trim that off there we go Let's try it again. I don't remember which is the top, which is the bottom. I just feel like that was the top. Okay, so I'm really liking the way it looks just like that. Um, the bottom part, I cut it enough where it's not touching the table. And I've lifted it up just a little bit. And I kind of like the way, see how it curves right here? The top of the jar curves right here. So when I lift it up, these little edges here kind of like they look like they're almost flaring out so I'm just gonna push them out a little bit because I kind of like that look and of course like I said make sure you cut off any little bits of sharpie wire you could use a wire uh, or a metal sandpaper There's sandpaper you know little blocks of sandpaper that you can use to you know on metal pieces so my idea was that I wanted to put wire on here on the edges just to make sure that you know it wasn't going to be sharp and I feel like because I'm making this for myself that I feel like it's good like that I don't need to worry about it uh, the other thing was I was thinking if it was going to be sliding down and touching the table then maybe I needed to have this thicker rope here so that I could glue the wire down to the rope and the rope glue it to the bottom of the glass jar using the same fix-all so these are things that you could do. You could, you know, put this uh, rope down here, glue it to the glass first, right? And then push this down up against the rope once it's on here. And then put glue there so that that will stick to the rope as well. And then you've got yourself a little safety there so you know that it's not going to slide down and scratch your table. And I do like that look, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this off again. <laughs> and I'm going to put some of this fix-all glue and I can pop it open because I closed it really well there we go but I'm also going to put hot glue to make sure that it sticks down my little edge and has a little bit of um, I'm gonna leave it on there it's got a little bit of tape so it wouldn't uh, you know kind of like on un the un untwist or on become untwined the little rope pieces. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue doing that till I get it all the way around. And I'm gonna do a little section at a time because like I said, the hot glue um, dries really quick. And I'm gonna repeat that 
all this, I'm going to repeat it with the other jar. And I will be back. There are the two jars that now have uh, the rope at the bottom edge. And I slipped this back on the top and I've just glued it in some little spots here and there where it, the uh, edges meet and touch the uh, rope. There's some spots here where it doesn't touch, but that's okay. I'm just going to push it down a little bit more. And that will ensure also that this is not going to slide downward because you've got the rope stopping it. And the top part, it's up to you if you want to go ahead and bend these in and, and push them in towards the curve. Or if you have a much straighter jar or taller jar and this only goes up to a certain point, then you probably don't have to worry about bending them in. But then you could also put another rope on the top edge here if you felt more comfortable doing that. I like them the way they are. They don't bother me. I feel they're just going to be for decorative purposes. I might put some beans or some pasta in there or maybe some rice just to make them look pretty. Or I might throw in some potpourri or some dried, uh, you know, like uh, hibiscus flowers or something like that that will just be decorative in my little coffee or tea area. I think they're super cute like that. So now I've decided to go ahead and put some of these, this thinner twine uh, around the edge of the little lids. And that will ensure, because I did use a craft paint, that will ensure that, you know, it won't get scratched off here at the bottom. Now, the top is not the best job that I did at painting it, but I think it looks just fine. Like I said, these are screw on, so the little knob really isn't any use here. It's just a decoration. But look how that looks. So let me go ahead and, oops, and I just pulled it off. Okay, let me go ahead and finish this other one. I'll just glue it back on there. Okay, so that's what I meant. It's just decorative. It's not for the purposes of twisting it, but I did try doing that. Okay, let me go ahead and put this one and not grab it from the little decorative knob, or at least let it dry really well at that other glue cure on there really well before you try lifting it from there. I'm just going to, I'm putting glue right on the very edge and then I'm just going to put the rope on it and use my finger to make sure that it's, you know, level with the top of the jar or the top of the lid and just do a little spot at a time because the glue dries really quickly and I've got a little fan going so that also makes it uh, dry pretty quick. So I'm just going to go all the way around till I get to the the ends meet. Or this meets this other end right here. Let me go ahead and glue this down. Okay, so till it comes all the way around to this one. And then I'm just going to start doing another row till it comes to here. And then push, pull it downward. I'm not going to cut it there and then start another end. I'm just going to meet it with that end, glue it right there, let it dry and then bring it down and start another row. And just keep doing that. I think I did, what, four rows. I did four rows. Now, this row has some spots where it's kind of thin and then it gets like really thick. So in some spots, oh, let me just take this off like this. I keep wanting to grab it from the little knob. Okay, listen. In some spots, you might have like where you've done your four rows, but you can still see a little bit. Just cut off a little piece of rope and fill it in right there. You can't really tell, you know, somebody would have to look at it really closely. I need to get that knob from the floor, wherever it fell, and re-glue it on here because this glue here, see, it's still tacky. It hasn't dried really well. So just make sure that you let it dry before you start grabbing it. Okay, I shall be back once this little lid is done and I have fixed this one. All right, everyone, I have completed my farm style jars. I think they look really cute. Let me get one up close here so that you can see it. Here's the other one. I don't remember these are completely decorative. Now if you want to go ahead and skip the part where you put this little knob thing on top or just do as I said just let it dry really well before you try to uh, grab onto it because as you saw I was able to pull it off. Uh, but these are screw-on jars so obviously uh, the little decorative knob on the top is just not going to be useful for pulling off the jar. So anyway, uh, there you go. I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up. I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up and that you enjoyed this little craft that I've created for you today. I spent uh, $4 uh, because I did already have the craft paint and I did already have the rope. If I had to buy the rope, like I said, it's an inexpensive rope. I probably would have spent five, maybe six dollars. So it's obviously a nice, inexpensive craft uh, to make 
two nice little jars. Now these can uh, obviously be used for anything. I did wash them out that I could put some, so I can put some food in there, maybe even some candies. But I think I'm just going to put in something that uh, I don't need to have to open them. I think they're really nice like that, just decorative. Uh, you could use these in your bathroom as well. Maybe put some cotton balls in there, Q-tips, or just uh, whatever you feel like you want to put in there. Put some potpourri in there just for, just for looks. All right, everyone. Leave a nice comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And make sure you hit that notification bell. I put up videos every Tuesday and every Thursday. And sometimes I do have a weekend vlog. Now, I didn't have one this past weekend. It just wasn't <laughs> a good time for me. The, the day, my Saturday just went by. We were doing too many errands. Sunday, I was just tired and I took a break. So, I'm here with this for each day. And I'll be here Friday with a recipe for you. So, make sure you share your social medias. And as always... Enjoy.